Hello, I am Ma'am Elga. In this video, I will discuss relative extrema of functions of two variables. I assume that this topic is familiar to you because you have already encountered this in Math 27, particularly on optimization, wherein you try to find the minimum or maximum values of a function. So I hope you still remember your first and second derivative tests because in this topic, we will do the same. We will simply extend our functions to two variables. And instead of using ordinary derivatives, we'll be using partial derivatives. Let us begin with a quick review on the concept of relative extreme values for the case of functions of only one variable. I hope you remember this, or at least you're familiar with the topic. An extremum can be a maximum or a minimum. A relative maximum value exists at a point, let's say p, if there is an open interval containing the point p, such that in the interval, the function value of p is maximum. Similarly, a relative minimum value exists at a certain point, say here, between 2 and 3. If there is an open interval containing that point, such that in that open interval, the function value at the point is minimum. In other words, you have a maximum or a minimum value relative to the interval. But if you are interested on in the minimum or maximum values in the entire domain of the function, then that's absolute extremum. Note that relative extrema may not be unique. Say, for example, if I extend graph in this manner, another relative maximum value exists at the point here between 4 and 5. We also recall that we use the first derivative to find the critical points. Those are the candidate points for which a relative maximum or minimum may exist. The critical points are points on the domain of the function that are zeros of the first derivative or those points for which the first derivative is undefined. Since these critical points are candidates at the moment, we must verify if indeed a relative maximum or minimum exists at the point. The tool is second derivative test. Remember, first derivative to find the critical points, second derivative to evaluate the behavior of the function at the critical points. For the case of functions in two variables, the graph is in the R3 space, like in this example. At this particular part of the graph, we have a relative maximum value. This maximum value corresponds to a point AB on the Cartesian plane. This point AB is a critical point. Notice here that critical points are not real numbers but ordered pairs. That is because our function has two variables. Furthermore, this maximum value here is maximum only for a portion on the xy plane. This maximum value here is maximum only for a certain area on the xy plane. Hence, these are relative maximum values. In the lower part of the graph, you can see relative minimum points. So this is how relative extrema of functions of two variables look like graphically. The important question now is how do we find these extreme values analytically? First is finding the critical points. Again, the critical points now are ordered pairs. To find them, we will use partial derivatives. We find points A, B that will make the partial with respect to X and Y both zero or one of them is undefined. Since we are dealing with more than one equation to satisfy, we will be solving a system of equations. So techniques such as elimination and substitution that you learn in high school may come in handy. After finding the critical points, we evaluate whether these are indeed extrema. We are going to do that using the second derivative test. But in this case, we will do a little more computations. We compute for the Hessian determinant, which is given by the second order partial with respect to x, Multiply to the second order partial with respect to y, both evaluated at the point a, b, minus the square of the second order partial with respect to x and y, evaluated at the point a, b. After computing for the determinant, we verify with these conditions. If the determinant is positive and the second order partial with respect to x at the point a, b is also positive, then f has a relative minimum value at a, b. If the determinant is positive, and the second order partial with respect to x at the point a, b is negative, then the function has a relative maximum value at a, b. Furthermore, if the determinant is negative, then the function has a settle point at a, b, f of a, b. 
A settle point is a point on the surface of the function. And since our function has two variables, the graph is in the R3 space. That's why the settle point has three coordinates. Lastly, if the determinant is zero, no conclusion can be made regarding the relative extrema. To illustrate a saddle point, let us consider the hyperbolic paraboloid defined by f of xy equals x squared minus y squared. A saddle point is like the 3D counterpart of the point of inflection. It is also called a mean max point because it happens when a relative minimum exists in one direction, like this, and a relative maximum exists in the other direction. Now let us try to find the relative extrema or the saddle points of the function defined by f of xy equal to x cubed plus y squared minus 6x squared plus y minus 1. The first thing that we need to do is to compute for the critical points. In doing so, we need the partial derivative with respect to x, which is given by 3x squared minus 12x. We also need the partial derivative with respect to y, which is 2y plus 1. We equate both equations to 0 and solve for this system of equations. Let us label the first equation as equation 1, the second as equation 2. From equation 1, we can compute for the value of x by factoring. So we have 3x times quantity x minus 4 equal to 0. This implies that x is either 0 or 4. From the second equation, we can compute for the value of y, which is negative 1 half. Using these values, we derive that the critical points are the ordered pairs 0, negative 1 half, and 4, negative 1 half. After finding the critical points, we need to apply the second derivative test to determine the nature of the function at these points. Hence, we need to compute for the Hessian determinant. In doing so, we need the second order partial with respect to x, which is 6x minus 12, the second order partial with respect to y, which is 2, the second order partial with respect to x and y, which is 0. We then evaluate these functions at each of the critical points and then compute for the determinant using the formula below. For the first critical point 0, negative 1 half, the first entry would be negative 12, followed by 2, then 0. And so the determinant at 0, negative 1 half will be negative 24. For the second critical point 4, negative 1 half, the second order partial with respect to x will be 12, with respect to y will be 2, x, y, 0. And so using the formula, the determinant is 24. For the first critical point, 0, negative 1 half, we computed that the determinant is negative 24. Therefore, we conclude that the function has a saddle point at 0, negative 1 half, negative 5 over 4, negative 5 over 4 being the function value at 0, negative 1 half. For the second critical point, 4, negative 1 half, the determinant is 24, and the second order partial with respect to x is positive 12. So we conclude that the function has a relative minimum value at 4, negative 1 half, with the minimum value negative 133 over 4. This figure illustrates the graph of the function as well as the saddle point and the relative minimum point. To summarize, I have discussed relative extrema of functions of two variables. There are two important points where we used partial derivatives. Number one is in finding the critical points, and number two is in the second derivative test in order for us to determine the nature of the function at the critical points. For more examples, please refer to the set of exercises provided to you. This has been Ma'am Elia, and have a good day. Hello, Math on the Invitro. To check out more lecture videos, click here. And to supplement your learning, don't forget to answer the exercises which you can find in the description box below. Enjoy and stay safe!